take, take the lead in that production and so many other things. So we may also start with parts production. You know, it is not a must that we must start with the whole. So, but we can target some very useful parts and then start producing it and then later on we go to the whole. Then I come to the issue of the government. You see, the government should provide seed money. You see, we know that the government has a mountain, you know, uh, self-sufficiency, financial autonomy, all this kind of thing. Which to us is telling us that they want to hands off in funding education. But if they want to do that, why can't we do it, you know, in a winning system? That when a mother wants to win a child from breastfeeding, so you start, you know, uh, with giving in some substitute alongside with the breastfeeding. You don't just stop at once. You see, so if the government really wants to disengage, which are not in support, you see, but let us, you know, approach it, you know, from a mother that wants to win. And what do you do? You start providing seed money for investment into some other areas. So that after some time, so you now see that these institutions can generate enough money for themselves, then you can withdraw if you wish. Or you can direct your own funding into some other aspect, maybe some new aspects of you know, uh, knowledge, which they may not have to go into until it is matured. You see? So that is that. Then, thorough supervision. You see, uh, we have to say it without any apology that uh, the Nigerian system is corrupt, you see? And that when we talk of funding, 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 if care is not taken, even when the fund comes, the administrators may mismanage it. You see, we have seen a former PC that wanted to become a governor and was diverting all the IGR of that university to you know, sponsor political you know, campaign, you see? So how do you, you know, uh, manage that situation. The staff will go on strike, lose some month's salary because you know they wanted the government to fund, and the fund will come. Somebody will take it to political parties. You see, so that is the area where you know uh, thorough supervision will have to come, you know, uh, from the government, and also you know from the public, the people who are the real owners of these things. You see, enough of a hybrid seat that we usually sit hybridly, you know, saying that these things are for government. When we should know that these things are for us. You see, so we see that our own participation in you know, making sure that the system is working fair, you know, very well is very less as a people. You see, we enjoy criticism. We just sit down and say, you know, President so 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 is bad, uh, Governor that that is you know worse, this and that. But what is our own participation? You see, I you know let me give you an instance. A trailer tire was you know uh, deflated or punctured, and then when the trailer driver you know wanted to jack it up, he realized that his jack cannot enter you know into the position where it will able to jack it up. You know the next thing he did? He brought a digger and started digging the quota. You see? You see, in order to put his own jack. You see, and people were you know passing by and they were just leaving him. You see. So this fellow man definitely is not living in that area. He's just passing. And the people that are living there are seeing it and they are just leaving. You see, for God's sake, is it the government that will come and stop that? You see? So that is an example of a level of negligence of public you know, facilities. That we just feel that it is not ours, it's for government. And somebody will be spoiling it. Months into you know, uh, tarring of a road, that is when somebody, a landlord somewhere, will now think it is water pipe. And will come and dig. And because the Nigerian system has not changed how much it requires for you to you know, break a quota you know, since the 70s, so you will just go and pay maybe like uh, 20 naira, and then you know you come and break the tar. You see that was started about you know few months ago, and everybody will sit back. 
You see, so this is where we have to come in as a people. That anything that is provided for, by the government is for us, and we should devise a way of protecting these things you know, from the uh, people that are ready to spoil it, including our institution. So the community in Ilaro and the Yewa in general should know that this institution is theirs. You see, and they should take active role in making sure that things go well here. You see, so this is you know what I meant by the public should position themselves. In summary. I say that uh, you know the three tiers of government have a role to play. So because we're talking of vocational, technical, and uh, you know technological education, and uh, we know that you know uh, vocational schools are the lowest. So the local government have a role to play there. Then the technical schools are owned by both federal and the states. You know, that is federal government can establish technical school, states can establish technical school. Then we know that uh, polytechnics are also for states and the, the uh, federal. So all of, all of these three tiers of government have a role to play, you know, in this. Then uh, the Nigerian public also have a role to play, just as I've said. And then uh, the institutions themselves also have a role to play. So it is a kind of you know wide responsibility for all of us. So to make sure that these institutions survive, so everybody will have to come and play their own role. So and uh, lastly, uh, I say that uh, while I trust in my capacity to suggest solution, I believe that what I've suggested far you know so far will impact positively if accepted and applied. I humble, I humble myself to say that instead of treating these suggestions of mine as all in all solutions, uh, we should collectively see them as a pivot to start a discussion on funding, survival, and continuous relevance of professional, technical, and technological education development in Nigeria. Meaning that I'm inviting you to also come and contribute your own knowledge. That you know, no man is an island of knowledge. What I know is what I've said, but there are a lot of things I do not know, and of course I wouldn't have said it. So this is an opportunity for us to all come together and uh, contribute to the development of Nigeria. And to this end, I would like to say that uh, there should be an immediate formation of action committee to bring to life this discussion. That is, uh, if care is not taken, this will be you know, in the archives of several talks that have been made in Nigeria, that were not short of suggestions and ideas and talk, were short of implementation. So now uh, I want us to uh, say, with the permission of uh, you know my rector, is it that uh, and all other rectors that are here today, so that let us begin to have an action committee to bring to life this discussion. Is it so that you know we continue to discuss it and then we'll be able to get to somewhere rather than to just leave it as a talk show whereby after this talk and all the clapping and the rest you know uh, we just dump it there and uh, we talk about that it again so please uh, i seriously beg for this to happen now and now now uh, we begin to think on the modification of the nigeria policy of uh, vocational, technical, and technological education. Uh, why do I say this? One is that it has to be bring up to date with global practices. And also, some of the recommendations and suggestions I've said, by the time you go into the policy, you see that it is not possible. Yes, for those of us that have been transacted with policies. You see, uh, the rector may like what I've said, the other rectors might like it, the chairman might like it, but when it comes to implementation, the policy does not allow us to do this. So which means that we have to put into cognizance that these policies have to be reviewed, you see, in order to accommodate some new things so that to lead to progress of these institutions. So then uh, we have to also give serious consideration to this PPP arrangement that I've said for funding of this education. And then I also say a quick formation of the ICC, that is a you know institution industrial complex to harness and develop potentials available in our you know institutions. And then you know this 
uh, should be focused on uh, production of technical tools and training on their uses, production of laboratory and workshop equipment, because I said it before, that these laboratory and workshop equipment, no matter how good you are at maintaining it, you have to change it at one time or the other. And that means you have to go and buy. But if you quickly divert your attention to production of these things, it means that by the time the current one spoils, then you already produce your own to use. So you have caught fun you know, in that aspect, and perhaps you can also sell out your own product to other places. And uh, then finally there, we have production of industrial and household needs, especially for the Nigerian market. So this is uh, my submission, and uh, you know, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Another beautiful round of applause for Professor Abuaba. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You may please be seated. Thank you. Thank you. That was a very wonderful and scholarly submission from the erudite and eminent Professor uh, Boaba. I learned so much today from that um, speech. Very educative. Very, very educative and highly intellectual. Once again, we say thank you very much, sir. We feel honored with your presence and the food we are given this afternoon. And we are not taking that for granted. Thank you very much, sir. A round of applause for more time for this one. Now moving on to this afternoon, I'd like to call on Dr. Rashid Adebin Bay, the Dean School of Engineering, Federal Protecting Adwekiti, who is representing the chairman of today's occasion, Dr. TJ Alaki, for his remarks as well as um, Rapporteur's remarks and responses concerning today's lecture. Can we please appreciate him as a step forward? Technical 
and technology pool education. We don't need to argue about that, about the importance of all these three aspects of education in all our institutions. He listed the challenges involved, primarily, tech, I mean, funding. And when you look at it, funding, you also look at some aspect of funding, which has to do with the way we manage the fund. Aside from that, he listed some of the emerging areas in technology, ICT, artificial intelligence, Biochemical, it is illicit. So when you look at it, you will see that all these areas listed, these are some of the things they are doing now, and which we may gain the next expertise in the next 30 years. Probably what we are doing now it is what has been done by the Europeans some 20, 30 years ago before we master it at this end. Why are we not building new frontiers? Why are we not challenging the system order? I believe it is a cultural. The way we were brought up from our childhood, you don't query the authorities of the elders. If you are a five-year-old boy and you ask questions from somebody who is 30 year old, and whatever the answer, that's it, yes sir. Because traditionally, we are not structured to query a system order. You cannot, if you cannot query a system order, then you cannot create new frontiers. That's the traditional aspect of our inability to move forward. Then I will still come back to my point. Are we learning? My own submission is that we are learning. But the learning, I can classify it as in, in uh, arithmetic progression. Whereas the developing world, they are moving in geometric uh, progression. That's the way I look at it. Because when you establish a polytechnic or a university, is supposed to solve the problem of the environment, the community. Are we doing that? We are, you see most of the universities in Europe, America, Asia, it is, the universities has established to solve their immediate problems. But we have not been able to achieve that yet. Then when you look at us, we have not been able to create. Okay, let me give you an example here. In the polytechnic, when you go to the engineering laboratories, engineering workshop, you see some of these machines. The rector mentioned all these are Greek machineries. You see them being fabricated throughout most of the polytechnics, most of the universities. What is the challenge? The challenge is our inability to create value chain in whatever we are doing. Do you ask yourself a question? Why are we watching the Premier League in Nigeria with religious uh, devotion? Because they created the Premier League from their own environment and they were able to sell it to us. Some people, some uh, men, the, their wives prefer them to watch the Premier League because it will make them to stay at home. And you see them spreading the gospel of this Premier League. I tell you, the advertisement alone is over 3 billion pounds. The Premier League. Whatever these people are doing, they create value share out of it. We are unable to create value share in whatever you do. And there is nothing they are doing that they will not create value chain. And this brings me to the issue of the entrepreneurship centers we have created in all our institutions. There are two schools of thought in entrepreneurship development. Some people believe that entrepreneurship can be taught in our institutions. 
that when you go to school, you can learn how to be an entrepreneur. Why is some people believe that entrepreneurs are born? That you don't need to learn it. But my divergence is on the way we view entrepreneurship. And that's the reason why we are unable to create value chain. When you look at our entrepreneurship, we focus on vocational training. I'm thinking that somebody who study electrical engineering should be taught in that department how to create value from electrical engineering practice. That is, after graduation, he can pick a, a small aspect in, in his uh, study and go into town, like my everyday professor mentioned. You see the welders in town, the technicians in town, the facilities they are using, they are so, in fact, they are so small and uh, backward, but they are ever busy. Whereas, you have somebody who studies HND, I mean, who has HND, sorry, who has HND in mechanical engineering, with specialization in auto, carrying his vehicle to the town, where the vehicle will be subjected to empirical speculation. Because the mechanic in town doesn't know why certain things happen. But he knows that when this thing happened, when he was an apprentice, this is what is uh, uh, organic. And he will just try and do it. If it doesn't work, till you spoil your bed. So, what I'm trying to say is that we should teach these students how to create value chain in their field. Instead of somebody who studied mechanical engineering, also doing vocational training, in uh, uh, fish farming, in uh, uh, beads making, because I see a lot of these things. I used to be a, a deputy director at the center, and I was a director of engineering in my school before, so I've seen some of these things. And the elder speaker also mentioned that we should try to fabricate some of this equipment. It's very, very difficult when you want to transform machine built at the departmental level, you want to take it to the market. It's a very difficult thing. Because why as a director in my center of engineering, we are producing five cabinets, we are producing uh, this uh, milling machine errata, we are producing all these uh, agri farming tools, we are producing them. Then my former rector now called me. You have produced all these things. Will, she will come, Dr. Mrs. Sakande, she will come and say, okay, we have produced all these machines. Can the potato make money from it? So I call my engineers. Then we do some uh, demo calculations. That's the bill of quantities in engineering. And we discover that for you to mass produce, requires so many things aside from just producing the machine. You can produce the machine, but at a very high cost. Then starting the I mean mass producing requires you to have a staff that is totally I mean that is totally going to be shared or severed from the public sector mentality to private sector mentality. What I'm saying is that if you want to, if you have staff, resume by 8 o'clock. They must resume by 8 o'clock and close by 4. But in our institutions, you don't get that. And if you want to do the right thing, you know I don't want to say, <laughs> I don't want to say the consequences because they will label you. So you cannot use public sector bureaucracy to establish value chain and produce equipment for the market. That is very, very, I've tried it before, very, very difficult. And that is the direction we should be moving towards. 
And in moving towards this direction, I think we will learn a lot. The public sector, I mean the public institutions for protecting universities, we will learn a lot from the private protectives and private universities in the management of some of these things. Because my institution is directly facing Abbott, and we see the way they do things. I don't want to go into details of that. Because in the public sector, if you want certain things to be done, it's very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. Because the oil processing machines, they are, they are not. We have produced them in my institution with using stainless steel. It's not difficult to do that. But bringing people from outside to come and look at some of these machines and see whether you can collaborate. There's an agency meant for that in Abuja called NOTAM. It's an, it's an agency for technological acquisition. And the steps, steps you have to go through before you get their uh, approval. Because the, I mean, Professor Ababa mentioned the issue of us generating money from our research. We can do that, but you have to go through note and force for the, for the research effort to be presented. Then after picking most of the universities in Europe, that's what they do. Because when you look at our protected universities, we follow the same pattern. We first of all have water processing plants. We have bakery. We have, when you look at the money coming from water processing plant, bakery, they are now fund one department. Just one department. I'm using, I've been to several protectors. They can't. So we need to move into serious business. Like in the, in the tool the director mentioned this morning, the biometric. Uh, Machine, the, the, the VAT is, I'm interested very much in it because this is a tool that, if properly, uh, if you do the proper R&D on it, when I say R&D, this machine, as from being able to produce it, you have to subject it to a lot of uh, analysis. That means when, you, when I say analysis, you create several scenarios for the machine. If this, a uh, cost factor increase, what will happen to the machine? Then you do several tests on it. When you have been able, finally, to say that this is the... And you have to also take it to the town for people to use it and give you a report about the machine. That is what is called the evaluation. We call it performance test evaluation in engineering. Okay? After bringing it to the campus, and you are able to validate it properly, then you, don't, you cannot set up a laboratory in this protecting to mass produce it. You, you can never make profit from them using the existing bureaucracy. So what you can only do is to go to town and look for an investor, I mean, for a businessman who will pay you a large sum of money, which can be an equity in his business. You can use that money instead of collecting it directly, take it to have a share in his business. That's how most of these corporations in Europe, that's how they make their money. By performing researches and making sure that their products are, are in town. And talking about researches, I look at the protecting system in my school, for instance. Almost every week, you have people completing their pages. And I believe that is what is happening in this protecting We have several PhD holders. In an environment where the maximum certificate you can use is HND. They are by having a lot of uh, manpower being wasted. Are you getting me? So I look at this as a serious challenge in the protecting system. We should find means of increasing the type of people we train. That is, the protection system should go into training of masters and PhD degree holders. That is when 
the the knowledge acquired will be useful. And when you look at the countries that have advanced in the world, you see that they advance based on knowledge. You look at Japan, you look at Singapore, they don't have mineral resources, but they are, the knowledge is there. So, in conclusion of my submission, I want to profusely thank the everyday speaker for cutting across all the issues in technology. And I bring you thanks from my uh, erudite uh, rector to Dr. T.J. Alake. Thank you. Responses from the audience, maybe two or three. Join the chairman to thank our erudite speaker for the loss that he has uh, revealed out to us on issues of funding. And uh, the chairman has also touched on the practicability of some of these issues, especially as far as uh, the public sector school in this is concerned. But I want to provide some solutions to the problems that the chairman identified as something that may disturb us from utilizing those ideas. One thing has uh, cropped up. It's important that we imbibe some real life activities into the training of our students. That is, we take their practicals away from being just ordinary workshop practicals to involve some real life activities that they are going to learn, learn from. This is why they were supposed to be going for science or IT. But most of the time, you discover that the science or IT is actually not being taken serious, and they don't even gain what they should gain. Rather, what is happening nowadays is that having some uh, kind of real-life businesses in the school environment, separating it from the bureaucracy of uh, the bureaucracy of the, the, the public sector. Let me give you an example. You have a consult, pony consult. Making your pony consult not to be, uh, not to be driven by the public service sense or public service uh, thinking or mentality. Let your pony consult be purely private business driven. Let the head of the poly consult be a salaried person that is drive, deriving a salary from that establishment. Not from not from a salaried uh, director that is going to have his that, that is what we are, we are doing in Yaba Tech now. The director of our poly consult he is getting his salary we call it Jabate consult, getting the salary from that consult. And his salary is more than mine. His salary is more than that of the rector. But then, he is to earn what is going to be paid. Without that, he will not get money to be paid. And we are removing all the polytechnic staff working in the consult. Allowing him to, to, to uh, uh, employ his own staff. When somebody's salary is sure, and you want him to be bringing in profit, of that or that, so let the businesses we will be setting up 
be divorced from the public service sector. We are, in our, in our day, we, are, we are extending it beyond our consults now. We created Yabatek Homes. Yabatek Homes is for real estate business. The dean of the School of Environment is going to be the chairman for some time. After which, we will remove it and then employ a managing director that will be receiving his salary from that. We establish Yabatek Farms. Yabatek Farms is also going to follow that suit. And we are thinking of doing the same thing to engineering. So when we want to have a company or a setup that will be producing and selling, you can start off by using the engineering department to do the beginning um, uh, meet with print. Thank you. And after some time, divorce them. Bring in a private person that will now bring the private sense into it and will drive it and make profit out of it. I think in this way, we can help in achieving some of what Good afternoon. Um, following the protocol, I want to appreciate Prof for a job well done. And uh, I believe because you have been part of the system, that's why you are able to analyze all those problems and prepare solutions for us. The problem is what exactly the government wants from the political. Because I know the polytechnics have tried their best. They have made impacts. The chairman talked about NOTAM. I was a member of NOTAM board. And we told them, okay, NOTAM, you said there is a process to get your research patented. I know at Federal Polytechnic that we follow that process and we had about five patents. Then I said, okay, what are you using this patent for? The next step is for them to link with an industry to mass produce this and give us reality. That is what NOTAP is meant for. But as of today, I'm not sure that I've been able to do one, even for any university or any polytechnic. But when you get to NOTAP, it's building 10 stories offices. The same issue we have with uh, this issue of IT and seaways. You know, because this industry they are supposed to provide those services for the polytechnics and those doing IT or seaways. And from that, they give them some, uh, what to call it, is it tax relief that they started giving all those uh, industries? They are collecting those reliefs without giving us the services that is required. So government is there, what exactly do they want from the public sector? We don't know. He said we should do research, we should do fabrication, we should do this. We go ahead and do it. But to go a step further, we have even gone to the extent of even doing a exhibition with manufacturers of Nigeria. We went to the exhibition. They saw those equipment, they were interested, but nobody was ready to go forward. So exactly what do they want us to do? So I'll be doing our best. Then another thing is the issue of polytechnic itself. As all the directors are here now, if you ask them, what is the position of polytechnic in relation to the university? All of them will say different things. Some will say, give us degree awarding. Some will say, convert us to university. And it has been the problem. There is a bill in national as every time to convert Federal Polytechnic to University. Today, I had my rector talking about Polytechnic being degree awarding institution. These are two different perspectives to the issue. So what exactly do
to be what? We have to agree. Because when you refuse to agree, it is then that the uh, government will be able to capitalize on our weakness and deal with us. So it's important that the polytechnic itself, we sit down together, we agree on what we want. I commend the effort of the present years. He's so passionate about the polytechnic. But one thing is that his own direction does not tally with some institution. Because now, if you say, okay, in the federal police that we want to clear our name. I'm very sure the KBSC will not want to hear that one. They want Naro to be University of Technology. And that's what everybody in this locality wants. So where is the area of a convergence? Then another issue is the issue of this policy of federal government concerning technical education. We started with skill acquisition framework. Who is supposed to, to, to have that skill acquisition framework? Is it those that have undergone HND or those that are starting from secondary school? There are areas of conflict that needed to be really ironed out so that we can move this uh, country forward. So, um, if you, uh, when you talk about funding, this assessment, you know, the computer for this assessment, we did it eight years ago, eight years before they started giving them money. At that time, we were even talking about uh, giving for a laboratory, because we sat down, we said, okay, a typical laboratory, how does it look like? And let's post it. And we costed it. And we multiply it with each of the polytechnic. I was surprised when you were giving them, you see, 800,000 as well, what uh, we have those ones that are things that cannot move the institution forward. So in any area of uh, making effort, we have made efforts, but government is not even helping us at all. Thank you.
if other restaurants can follow that approach, we are trying to do that at Ferra Botanic Academy. It's, it's not easy, but we are moving, we are forging ahead. Then, in my guy here about uh, creation of a value chain. Value chain. Look, we don't have to compare ourselves to the university. The university has its own mandate, Potemic has its own mandate. We should follow our own mandate strictly and make sure that we are successful at it. Why do you look for Thailand, bricklayers from Togo and Ghana? It's because of the scheme. So if we are able to produce ND, HND graduates with, with uh, adequate skills, nobody will ask of your certificate. But when you start to pull, you are looking at somebody upstairs and you are following him, you left your own work. We should concentrate on our mandate, which is a skill acquisition, and make sure that we are able to produce graduates that can stand on their own and create value shape from whatever skill they are able to obtain from the polytechnic. At that level, you now see a lot of professors asking us in the polytechnic, how do you do it? But when you run after them, you cannot be a professor. Why are you disturbing your head? You are in the polytechnic. Sit down, bring out things from your own end, and they will respect you. But if you don't do that, and you are looking up at them, they will continue to knock your head and say, OK, this little boy, stay where you are. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Chairman, we appreciate you. Um, because of our time, we have to skip one of the items and then we move forward. Uh, during the submission of our guest speaker today, he actually, the impact of women in the world, especially in the educational sector. And no wonder in our polytechnic today, we have a woman as a registrar of the institution. Women are wonderful people. Women are the pillar of the home. Um, permit me to bring on board Mrs. A. F. Babatola for the vote of thanks on behalf of the Polytechnic this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Director Dr. Mukai Aremu Akinte, FCA, FCTI, other principal officers of the Polytechnic, distinguished members of the Polytechnic Management Committee, the guest lecturer, Professor Atufata Adilani Abuaba of the Department of Computer Engineering, University of Maidukuri, Pono State. The chairman of the day, engineer, Dr. Timitokwe John Alake, rector, the Federal Polytechnic Ado Ekiti, ably represented by engineer Rashid Adebinkwe, Dean School of Engineering. Rectors of sisters' institution here present, Rector Yabate, Rector Ayede, Rector Ilese, past rectors, registrars, Bosa, and the Polytechnic Liberian. Distinguished members of the academic board, deans of schools, directors of academic and service units, heads of departments and units, Members of staff here present, chairman and executive members of the ceremony committees, chairman and members of the convocation lecture committee, all the unions here present, ASU, SANE, NASU, presidents 
executive members and trustees of the Federal Polytechnic Hilaru Alumni Association here present, the Student Union Executive, and the great Nigerian students of the Federal Polytechnic Hilaru, graduates of the Federal Polytechnic Hilaru, security personnel present here, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the rector, the management, staff and students of this great citadel of learning, the Federal Polytechnic Ilaru, the best polytechnic in Nigeria, 